Our next conversation today is with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome to Commerce City, uh, home of, among other things, Colorado's largest polluter, the Suncor oil refinery, which disproportionately impacts Latino communities. You're here talking about the Biden administration's efforts to bring better health care to Latino communities. Um, is that not, though, essentially, when the EPA continues to renew their permit to pollute, just treating the symptoms and not the root causes of health issues in this community? Well, we can certainly get into the conversation about what we need to do to grow a, a healthy society. But we're not going to wait until that is resolved because there are families today who need access to care. And Congressman Caraveo here, who represents the area, can tell you that we're going to do everything we can to reach families today with the health care that we have. And the good thing is that we have community health centers like here. We have uh, access to care through mobile health clinics that are reaching families that oftentimes didn't have access to the care. And because of President Biden's effort, it's now much more affordable. So uh, with the help of Congressman Caraveo and Congress in getting us to some of the additional resources, we're getting to more families than ever before. More m Americans today have access to health care than ever before with their own insurance. That's because President Biden has pushed so hard under the Affordable Care Act to expand access to care. And as a result of the work that members in Congress have done and because of the president's efforts, today the prices of prescription drugs are going down. Those are all good things. But no doubt, we need to have a healthy environment you need to have a healthy neighborhood if you're going to hope to ever grow strong and healthy kids who will be our future leaders. We heard a lot about Denver Health today. Uh, Denver Safety Net Hospital is in financial crisis right now due to the cost of uncompensated care. A portion of it, certainly not a majority, but about $10 million over 16 months was care for migrants who have come into Denver Health. Given the fact that it's the Biden administration that has been unable to secure the southern border, is it incumbent upon you to find some discretionary HHS funds to help Denver Health stay afloat as it spends millions to care for migrants? So I want to make sure one thing is very clear. The, the border is, a, is, and I'm not, a, obviously, and I'm not the Department of Homeland Security, but I will tell you this. The, there is a process that is at work. The laws in our immigration system have been broken for a long time. And this administration has done everything it can under the law, that's the important part, under the law to make sure that we handle the, the border properly. We're not going to violate the law simply because it's broken in trying to address the border. But no doubt that the border has been a place where you don't have a sense of people who are passing drugs at, uh, at random because they get to because the borders are open. No, they're not. Uh, the, the issue is when people do come in and request asylum, there is a legal process here. And we have to go through that legal process. Because Congress has tried, but we didn't get enough support to get efforts through to reform a broken immigration system, we have difficult situations that occur. And you've mentioned on the health care side, no doubt that there are additional individuals who are seeking health care. I want to applaud the work that's been done across the nation by our hospitals, our medical providers in making sure that we treat individuals who need health care access and we don't get caught up in the the politics of border enforcement and the politics of immigration because at the end of the day these are human beings and what we want to make sure is we treat human beings properly but no doubt we all have an uh, obligation to try to be there to support each other as we care for those who need health care in our communities. And I thank Congresswoman Caraveo for the work that she's been doing to try to address that. In including a bill to make up for that uncomp uncompensated care that's part of an immigration package that I um, introduced precisely because that Senate bill is not getting any momentum um, due to uh, political um, issues. And so not only would my bill draw uh, funding to Colorado, to interior cities, to make sure that we are able to make up for the taxpayer money that's been used, but it specifically says clinics and hospitals that have provided uncompensated care should get some federal money because it's a federal problem. You Last talked about, question. you talked, thank you. Uh, you talked about lowering prescription drug costs. I'd like to ask you about cost shifting. Cost shifting. Cost shifting. So if, if out of pocket prescription drug costs are capped, and the president has talked about taking the $2,000 out of pocket prescription drug cost cap for, um, for public health and applying it to par private insurance as well. If those costs just get shifted by drug makers and insurance companies to co-pays and to deductibles, those are also out-of-pocket costs for Americans. And does that help people in the end if they're just paying in a different direction? That's a question that 
uh, presumes that the drug companies get to determine how pricing should always happen, that they will always get to be the ones who collect the profit at someone else's expense. And what the president is saying, uh, the drug companies are going to make their profits, but they shouldn't be making excessive profits. And if we reduce uh, as a result of competition, how much Americans are paying for prescription medication because of competition, not because uh, the drug companies are doing it out of the goodness of their heart. That's good for everyone. And so we don't believe any American should be paying two, three, four times more for the same prescription drug that someone in another part of the world is buying it and having access to it. We should be able to get the same kind of pricing. We should be able to get the best price possible. Negotiating to get the best price is not a problem. It's a good thing. And, and the pharmaceutical companies will get to make a profit. But to believe that the only way that you can reduce the price of a, of a prescription drug for one community is to shift the cost to someone else is to believe the drug company story. That's the only way to do business. That, that is not the way to do business. They are charging way too much and they don't deserve to charge that much and blame someone else if we're trying to reduce the price of those drugs because of competition. Thank, Thank you very much for your time.